Okay. Let's go back up. So there's nothing on that side of the frequency. Come back down again. Okay, we've turned the volume down there, so I pushed that. So what we've done here is we've just made up a very um, simple super head. So what we've got here, and I'll just show it up on the LT Spice, just made up a um, an optimized, pretty well optimized um, mixer here. So that's using two J310s again. So the lights aren't too good there. Um, and uh, we've got two inputs. So the first input to that mixer is the RF coming in from the amplifier we made up the other day. And the other input's coming from uh, from the SI5351. So that's set for the BFO frequency, and we'll have a look at the software in a sec. Uh, and the output of that is uh, 9 kilohertz, and that's going into um, the crystal filter. We've got that set just off to... The, the center frequency of this is uh, 9, kilo, uh, sorry, 9 megahertz. Uh, and I've got the signal coming into here um, set with the the, uh, the VFO frequency to sit uh, not at the center frequency but just on the edge of the skirts uh, which allows me then to pass the full 6 kilohertz bandwidth of this AM filter through to the product detector the product detector is the same as we had uh, last night sort of playing around with um, the configuration that uh, Pete Giuliano was using uh, you'll note here that I've got two 510, uh, not quite focusing there, two um, 510 ohm resistors, which is sort of uh, providing the um, the loading for the, the coil, and I've done away with um, that matching, matching transformer, because that matching transformer was matching 50 ohms up into uh, the input for the uh, the JFET, so now it's just coupled straight through with a, um, with a 0 0.01 nanofarad. Uh, I'm using 0.01s all the way through because I've got about 5,000 of those things, I'm trying to use them up. Um, so, uh, so for the second product detector, so we've got the uh, the RF coming in from, or the IF coming in, and then uh, it's also getting another input from the second half of the uh, SI5351. Output of that is now audio coming through, and again, absolutely zero um, software-defined audio frequency filtering, so there's no digital signal processing at this stage, so audio coming in, straight back out, so as you can hear. Um, where are we, frequency wise? It's the, it's the, it's the full 6 kilohertz bandwidth, so there's a lot of noise coming through there, so all we'll look to do is, um, we'll look to uh, do some DSP on that. So just, just a very simple super hit, um, and what we've got for the circuit itself, that was the, uh, the mix on the input, so two J, uh, J310s, um, which is simple capacitor coupler coming in. So the bottom one there is the, the RF, the top one is the, the VFO frequency from the SI5351, and we're just sitting here with a uh, with a 100 microfarad, so again, micro Henry uh, inductor basically uh, pushing out the RF down here. Um, that's 600, that's 600 ohms there just for test. I should that actually drop that down to um, what I'm actually getting. Right, close enough at this stage of the game. Uh, and if I was to simulate that, then we're starting to see there that um, not too bad. That frequency there is around 9 meg, so we're starting to get to uh, where the peak is. Um, so that's not too bad in terms of uh, gain at the IF frequency. Software wise, um, no real change there, but now we have at the very last function that we're starting to uh, generate both our VFO um, and our BFO frequency. So we've got the, uh, the um, again this is not optimized, this is just getting up and running. That was at 9 meg center frequency plus our desired frequency minus 300, so it's now moving it away from the center of the crystal filter down to one edge. Uh, and then the, uh, the beat frequency oscillator is sitting there, that's a set frequency driving that one um, and then uh, the output of that of course is, is audio 
Uh, and the only other change I did was in regards to um, plotting out the the spectrum. Um, so now we've got, if I was to sweep, sweep back here again, uh, we're now displaying 0 to uh, 6 kilohertz. Oh, come on. Sorry, the old focus is not going too well there. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's now, I've gone away from um, 0 to 20 kilohertz, it's now 0 to 6 kilohertz. So that's it coming through. So again, you can sort of see there that um, it's taking out quite a bit there. So that's, that'd be zero, and that's sort of getting close to that, that 2.8 kilohertz, um, which would be the standard uh, bandwidth for that, for that particular transmission. Yeah, so uh, not too bad there. So just, just I'll just keep playing around here and. Uh, might look at optimizing this. I think I might build this this circuit again. We'll build another one. We'll put it on this side, and then we'll look at uh, potentially doing some impedance matching there. Other than that, um, I think it will definitely need at the end of the day some more AF gain, which which is not surprising. You know, this particular um, audio shield here sitting under the Tensi um, has its own inbuilt amplifier, but it, you know it's uh, not pretty heavy dB it is, but um, there was always going to be a, a need for uh, an external Amplifier um, here to to really give some some better sound out of the um, for the for the room, but you know for what it is, it's it's pretty good. Anyway, so we'll keep you posted there, and uh, we'll keep playing around. Any questions, sing out. Otherwise, um, happy soldering. <laughs>